food making um, salicylic acid from, uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm trying to uh, think of the technical name for this. Well, it's aspen. Oh yeah, it's so a salicylic acid ASA. I'm making it from ASA. Um, uh, the ASA is actually just crushed aspen. Uh, this has binders and stuff. This is a molecule of the ASA. And yeah, there are people doing work outside, outside the lab. Just working on the lab. And then we are going to be making this molecule. This is salicylic acid. I hope I did not do that wrong. I don't think I did that wrong. No, I didn't do this wrong. Okay, now this is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is somewhat useful in the lab. Um, I haven't come across anything to use it in the lab, practical in the lab. But um, I'm trying to work on a synthesis of benzene from it. So let's get started on this. You'll need three grams, or this is a, this is actually, I've scaled this up. This is actually one and a half grams of sodium hydroxide, six tabs of aspirin, 60 mils of water, and 20 fil 25 mils of hydrochloric acid. So, grab your, your sodium hydroxide and place that aside. Get your 20, 20 mils of hydrochloric acid and place that aside. Grab your 60 mils of water and add to this your six, your six tabs of aspirin. I'm using 12 tabs of aspirin. Oh, I got, I got the HCL part wrong. The HCL part is supposed to be 15 mils of water per six, six, per six tabs, ta uh, tabs of uh, aspirin. Now we're gonna stir. Oops, how do I stir? It's a ghetto stir. I like it. Okay, here's an idea. And now uh, I'm just using a dead marker. Don't worry, I washed it in hydrochloric acid. So it is clean. So just stir till everything is dissolved. Let's try to dissolve everything. yourself and others add your solution of ASA to it. You're gonna have to do a quantum transfer for this and spin it around, it'll create heat and add that back into the flask. And spin that stir stick thing. Just add the sodium hydroxide back into the uh, back in, into your uh, beaker, but I know I need a bigger beaker than my 150 ml beaker. So now that you got this solution, um, just let it sit for a little, and then um, filter this. You're gonna have to filter this twice. Filter this, uh, filter this solution, and make sure you get all the um, products out of uh, it, out of the solution. Um, it should just be binders. That's that white stuff floating at the top of here. And then um, after it's filtered, 
at Hunch Court Castle. And I'll show you that show that in the upcoming court. Okay guys, um so I have my solution right here. And I'm so excited to see what's gonna be here. So, I let it sit for a good four hours, and filtered it, and I got this clear, slightly pale yellow, not very much yellow to it, color, and now I'm just going to transfer this to a clean beaker. And now here comes the final step. filter. I'm just going to shove it down in there. Now, if you can see this, here comes a dramatic part. I have 20 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. You might need to add more. 20 ml should do me. If not, if not, um, I will add more. I probably need to add more. milky precipitate. And as you can see, it's peeling like crazy. And you have successfully made salicylic acid or salicylic acid. You got this creamy, milky, white precipitate. If you don't get the milky white precipitate, then your reaction has failed. Or you didn't add enough hydrochloric acid. Make sure all that's added. Now. Yeah. I try not to add excess of hydrochloric acid because it starts fuming like crazy. Okay, so now that we have this milky white precipitate, we're now just going to take this and filter it. To obtain our product. Let's see, there's just a tiny bit left. So, there you go. Now, I'll filter this. And, uh, as you can see, I filtered it. And then, next step is just either put it in a desiccator or just let it wait for it to dry. I'm probably going to put mine in the desiccator. Just because, you know, I don't know, I just feel like it wanted it to dry faster. You don't have to put yours in the desiccator. This is not hydroscopic. So you have successfully made salicylic acid. You have made this compound right here. Which, which I've had for quite a while, but I really don't find any use for it right now. I'm trying to find out to make benzene from it. But as you can see, it's a white fluffy powder. So, you went from salicylic acid, uh, not salicylic acid, you went from steady salicylic acid to salicylic acid. Just like that. Not hard at all. So, stay tuned for my upcoming video. I'm not sure if I'm going to make benzene or not. I just don't like dealing with uh, carcinogens. I'm not fond of them, just because cancer runs in my family, and, you know, if I'm going to risk cancer, I already have, like, a up chance of getting it, no risk anymore. Now, I do like dichromates and chromates, though, so, I do use them sometimes, I don't have any right now. I haven't ordered any. I uh, freaking, um, only used the money dichromate before. I've only used that like once, once or twice, 
so I really haven't used it, and it's been a long time since I have. And I really have, I've never bought them. I usually uh, get them from the school, ask the school to donate or to me or something like that. And no, not my school. Uh, it's a college university. I asked them if they can donate to me. So there you go. So we went from aspirin to salicylic acid, just like that. Thank you, Science Hideout, uh, for uh, posting the experiment up on your YouTube channel. I just upped up the scale quite a bit. I went from, I think you did maybe 100, 100 milliliters, and I bumped it up to almost 200 milliliters. So I doubled it about. So thank you. I'll put your link in the description, your channel link. Just uh, promote you because you're, you're a good channel. Um, go subscribe to AM Chemistry. He's also a good uh, 